In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create Spotify, but actually make it even better because we can search for any song that we want, for example, a random stream beat song, and when we play it, it'll actually pull up the lyrics of that song. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle, and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. So if that sounds interesting, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this. Now to get started, we're going to be building out a React application for this Spotify app. So I just have a simple client folder that I ran create React app in. As you can see, I just have all the boilerplate React code. And then I have an empty server folder where we're going to put all of our server code because we actually need a server to do some of the authentication and lyric lookups for our application. Also, a really interesting tool that we're going to be using in this video is something called Tab 9. So if you just go over to your extensions here and do a quick search for Tab 9, you'll see Tab 9. Just click Enable or Install, whatever it is for you, and this will install the Tab 9 extension for you. And Tab 9 is a completely free autocomplete AI generator, so it'll use AI to generate autocompletions for you. And these autocompletions are amazing. They're so much better than the standard VS Code ones. And honestly, they made creating this project so much easier. And as you see throughout the rest of this video, we're going to use tons of Tab 9 autocompletes that just make writing code so much easier. It makes it more enjoyable. Honestly, it's just a really powerful tool. Tab 9 was actually kind enough to sponsor this video. So if you want, you can find a link in the description with additional information about Tab 9 if you want to learn more about it. But other than that, you're going to see tons of use cases of it as we write code in this tutorial. So with that out of the way, let's actually talk about how this application is set up. We're actually going to be using the Spotify API for this application because Spotify has a huge list of music that we can search from and play, and that'll make getting started with this application easier. And then from there, we're going to tack on additional functionality for the libraries that we're going to use for finding the lyrics of each song because Spotify doesn't actually reveal lyrics to you, so we need to use other libraries for that. So if you just go to developer.spotify.com or just search Spotify developers, you'll get brought to this page and we need to go to the dashboard section. This is where you can view all of your different applications and just make sure that you are logged in. So let's just log in real quick. And I'm already logged in, so it logged me in. And as you can see, we have the Spotify clone test. That was what the demo project I showed you was. That's what this is right here running. And then we can create a new app down here. So what you're gonna wanna do is just click on the create a new app button, give your name an app. We'll just call it Spotify clone. And then we'll give it a description. We'll just say Spotify, but better. There we go. And then just check these marks, you know, essentially saying that you read terms of service and so on. And now you can create an application and you can view your client ID and you can also view the client secret. If you click on this button, you can even edit settings about your application. And one important setting we're going to need to modify here is this redirect URIs. You're going to want to set this to the URL of your website. In our case, since we're just doing testing, we're going to set this to HTTP backslash backslash localhost 3000 because that is going to be the port and address where we're running our application for testing. But once you move past the testing phase, you're going to want to remove this redirect URI and actually set it to the real URI of your actual application. So once that's done, just click save. And that's pretty much all we need to do to set up our application on Spotify's end. And once you do that, it will essentially allow you to log in with Spotify. Because if I click this login with Spotify button, you can see it's going to bring me to this page here. This is the working version of the application. I just need to say that I agree to these terms. And then it's going to redirect me to that redirect URL, which in our case is localhost 3000. And from here, we can start using our application, as you saw in the demo at the beginning of this tutorial. But obviously, we're not going to be using this version of our application. We're going to be building it from scratch. So let's just close out of that and go over to our client here, where we can actually start up our application. So if we just open up a terminal and we CD into that client directory, we can run npm start. And that's going to start up the front end of our application, which is just a simple React application. Then if you just give that a little chance, it should start up and pop up over here. And we just have the boilerplate React code rendering for us over here. So nothing really crazy yet. Now, the first thing I want to work on in our application is going to be authentication. So if we just go over to Spotify here and we go to the docs section, we should find documentation. If we click in the web API section, we should hopefully find some documentation in here that goes over authentication. If we just look around, you can see we have authorization right here. Let's just click on that. And here's how we get authorization. And in Spotify, there's a bunch of different ways to actually do authorization. But the best way to do it is if you have a server that you're able to use your client secret that they give you to actually do the authentication. And if we just come down here, you can see they have four different workflows. And the one we're going to be focusing on right here is this authorization code, which is this first workflow, which is the one that requires a web server. And it looks really complicated when you look at this diagram, but it's actually fairly straightforward and simple to use. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. So if we just scroll down here a little ways, essentially what we need to do is we need to create an authorization URL. As you can see, we have this HTTPS accounts.spotify.com slash authorize. And then we have a bunch of different parameters we need to specify for this URL. We need to put our client ID, our response type, the redirect URI, and then all the way down here, we need to put the scopes that we need to be able to access. And as you can see, here's like an example of what this would look like. 
So to do this, let's just copy this URL here like this. And inside of our source folder here, let's just create a new component. We're going to call login.js. Do the little RFC trick to be able to generate this. Just like that. As you can see, we have a functional component and we can create an auth URL here. We can just set that to this for now. And what we need to do is add in all of these additional extra information, such as our client ID. We can say client underscore ID. And we need to set that to our client ID. Then the next thing that we need to set inside of here is going to be our response type. And this, it says, needs to be set to code. So let's just set this to code just like that. And we also need our redirect URI. And this is going to be that URL we just entered, which is HTTP localhost 3000. And as you can see already, if you look at my autocomplete suggestions, I'm having autocomplete suggestions from tab nine that are automatically telling me, oh, you know what? You probably want, you know, port 8080 or port 3000. It's kind of using AI to tell us what would be the best option. So it's already making my code a little bit easier to read, even for this string right here. Then we need our scopes. So we can say and scope. And scope is essentially just a space delimited list of all the different scopes that we need. And instead of a URL, a space is just percent 20. So we just replace all of our spaces with percent 20. We actually have a bunch of different scopes we need to be able to access. Instead of having you watch me type it all out, I'm gonna paste them in here and then explain exactly what scopes we have. So the first scope we need to access is streaming. Then we use that percent 20 for a space. Then we need to access their email. So that's user read email, again, percent 20. Then user read private. These are essentially required scopes to access user information. Then we have user library read. This will determine if a song is in the user's favorited library. And with user library modify, we can actually add songs to their favorites. User read playback state allows us just to figure out if they're playing songs and figure out what songs are playing, which is great for our lyric lookup. And then user modify playback state allows us to modify which song they're actually playing. So pretty straightforward stuff. And streaming again just allows us to play songs on their account. So make sure you type in all of these exactly as is. And all we have left is to enter in our client ID. So if we just back up here a little bit back to where we're on the dashboard, you can see we have our Spotify clone and we have our client ID. This is public, so it's okay if we put it in our front end like this. And that right there is our entire auth URL. If we redirect to this URL, it'll actually ask us for all of these different permissions and to sign in and to authenticate our application with this auth URL. So now inside of this login component, let's actually start rendering out our different information and get a link that goes to this auth URL, essentially just a single button. And I'm going to be using Bootstrap for some of the styling. Let's just get into our client again. And I want to npm i bootstrap. And I want to get react bootstrap as well. Just hit enter on that. And that allows us to use different bootstrap libraries and components. So we could come in here and say, for example, import container. And we want to get that from, and as you can see, it's already auto suggesting certain things, but we want to get it from react bootstrap. There we go. And that allows us to get our container component. Also, to ensure that we actually have these styles being rendered inside of here, we just need to make sure we import the bootstrap slash disk slash bootstrap. Again, this tab nine is coming in super handy because that's the exact route we need. We need the CSS and we need bootstrap.css and let's get the minified version of it. So again, tab nine coming in super handy. And for now, let's clear out this app component and just render our login component so we can actually have it on our screen. And let's make sure that we import login and we want to import it from dot slash login. Again, tab nine coming in super handy. Normal VS code won't do that for you. Now with that saved, we can get rid of like this app CSS, app test, index CSS, the logo, all of this test related stuff. And then here, let's just make sure we get rid of our index CSS, reporting of the web vitals and all this. We just want a bare bones application. And now finally in our login component, we can actually create our component. And we're just going to use a simple container here. Now inside of this container, we just need a single button and we're going to use an actual link for this, but we can style it as a button by just giving it the class of button, button success. And we want to give it a button large class as well. And we're going to give it an href and that href is just our auth URL. Close off this button and we'll just say login with Spotify. There we go. Now if we go over to our application, you can see fail to compile, cannot resolve our bootstrap dist bootstrap CSS bootstrap min.css. So if we just go back into our app, I accidentally put bootstrap in here one more, one too many times. It's just bootstrap dist CSS. Now, if we save, that should hopefully get rid of that error. If I just refresh and you can see we have our button. I just want to make sure this button is centered on our screen. So we're going to come in here, give this a class name of dflex. We want to justify content in the center and we want to align items center. Make sure this is content. And then also just to make sure we have a full height here, we can set our min height equal to 
100 VH. Now if I save that, you can see our button is centered. Now if I click on this button, I get redirected to that URL up here, which has all that information that we specified, and it just tells the user to make sure they agree to this. And if we click agree, it'll redirect us back to localhost, but you can see that we now have a code inside of our URL. And we can use that code in the next step of our authorization in order to get a token, which we can use for the user to authenticate them for all the different requests that we need. So we need to convert this code here to a token. Now if we go back to the Spotify documentation, there are going to be certain URLs that we can access in order to do this, but we're going to be using a library that makes it a little bit easier for us. There's a library called Spotify Web API Node, which you can use both in Node and on the browser, so the name is a little misleading. But essentially what this allows you to do is call the Spotify API in a much easier way. And as you can see, it has tons of different things that you can do inside of it. But the thing we're focused on is authentication, which is way down here in the documentation. If we just keep scrolling all the way. We finally found the authorization section. And what we care about is right here, the section that essentially allows us to create an a code, we take our code and we can convert it into an access token and a refresh token, which allows us to actually authenticate the user. And we need to do this on the server because it requires our client secret, which we can get inside of our dashboard here. So we need to set up a server that we can actually use for this login code. So inside of a server here, let's just create a new file. We're going to call it server.js. And then I want to make sure that I go into that folder. So I can just say cd dot dot slash server. Now we're in that server folder and I can just say npm init dash y to initialize a package json file and then i want to install express as well as that spotify web api node library that we just talked about we're going to use both of these libraries in order to set up a really basic server also if i just run that again it looks like i failed for some reason and it should install both of these libraries for us if we look in the package json you can see both of those are here and i also want to install here nodemon but I want this to be a dev dependency. So let's just save that as a dev dependency. And inside of our server, we can start requiring some of our files. We can get express, which is just requiring express. Then we can get our app, which is just equal to express. And again, tab nine is coming in super handy. It allows us to just auto generate pretty much all this code. Also up here, we want to get that Spotify, whoops, Spotify API, we'll call it web. API, just like that. And that is just equal to require Spotify web API dash node. There we go. So we have essentially the shell of our application and we can just say app dot post. And we want to post just a simple login application. There we go. And inside of here, I just make sure that this is an arrow function. Inside of here, I can create a new Spotify API. I can set it to Spotify Web API. I want to make a new one of these. So let's actually use capital S here just to clarify that this is a class that we're creating. And inside of here, I need to pass all of the credentials. So in our case, we need to pass a redirect URL, which in our case is a URI, and that is just HTTP localhost 3000. We also need to get our client ID, and we need to get our client. Oops. Client secret. We can get both of these here from our dashboard. So get the client ID and store that in here and then get our client secret. And obviously storing these is hard coded inside of our server is a bad idea since it's not very secure. We're going to move these into an ENV file. But for now, I just want to test to see if this works. And then if it works, we can move it into an ENV file. So now we have our Spotify API. And if we look at the documentation, once we have a Spotify API that takes in these different pieces of credentials, what we need to do is get the code which we're going to pass up so we can just say like const code equals request dot body dot code. We're going to pass it up in the request body. Then we can call this authorization code grant and pass it our code. And this is just a promise, which is going to return to us data that has the access token, a refresh token, and then a time when the actual access token is going to expire. So we can say Spotify API dot authorize or authorization code grant, pass it in our code. We can just say dot then this is going to get our data. And then we have access to all of the different information that we need. And this is what we're going to return from our API. So we can say res.json. And we want to return an access token, which is our data.body.access token. And this is actually underscore token, just because that's how the library works. Then we need to get our refresh token. And this is just equal here if I spell token for access token correctly. That's just the same thing. Data dot body. And I want to get the refresh token. And then finally, we're going to have here our expires in 
is just data.body dot underscore expires in. And again, tab nine is making all this auto generation super easy. Now, if for some reason we have an error, we can just throw in a dot catch here. We're gonna just do a simple res dot send status, and we're gonna send a 400 status. Essentially, we had some kind of error. Then we can just save that. And that's really all that we need to do for our actual API. It's super straightforward. We just need to authorize that we have a code. And once we do this authorization code, it's gonna give us this access token, a refresh token we need to actually do the accessing and refreshing of our authentication. And then we can just send down an error if for some reason we had a problem. Now, if we go back down into our application, you can see here we have our login. If we go over here, we have our code that's inside of our URL. So what I wanna do is every time I access our page, I wanna get this code from our URL. And we can just do this outside the component. We can just say const code is equal to, if we use URL search params, we can pass it in our window.location.search, and this is essentially going to get the portion of our code after this question mark. And this is just going to give us an object that has all this information. So we can say .get code, and that's going to get us the URL param that is called code, which in our case is the one that we care about. And if we have a code, then we want to render a new component, which in our case, we're just going to call dashboard.js. And we'll just do a quick RFC here to get that dashboard generated up. And now inside of our app, let's import dashboard from dot slash dashboard. And now what we can do is we can say, if we have a code, then we want to render out our dashboard and we want to pass it in the code that we have just like that. Otherwise we want to render this login component. Now, as you can see, when I save, we're rendering that dashboard component. And if inside of here, I just rendered out our code, and I save, you're gonna see our code is being printed out to the screen. So this is working as we would expect. Obviously we don't wanna print out this code, but this is a good start. Now, instead of putting all the logic for our login and authentication and refresh tokens in our dashboard, I wanna create a custom hook that handles all this logic for us. We're just gonna call it useauth.js. And we can just do that little RFC trick here. And we don't care about any divs being returned. We just care about this being a custom hook called useauth. Now with useauth, I'm gonna pass in the code that we need. And what we're gonna store inside of here is our access token, our refresh token, and our expires in it. Essentially the three different things we're returning from our server when we log in. So I wanna get state for all those. So I can say const access token. I wanna get set access token. And I set that equal to use state. And then I'm gonna do the exact same thing, but I wanna get for our refresh token. I wanna set our refresh token. And then this is going to be slightly different. This is set expires in. And then right here, we have our expires in. This is just the three pieces of information we need. And then in order to get that information, we can just use a simple use effect. Down here, we can say use effect. And inside this use effect, we just clear out some of this. We know our input here is gonna be code. That's the thing that we wanna run this use effect every time our code changes. And inside this use effect, we just wanna call that API that we created. So first, let's make sure we import use state and use effect, just like that. And then in order to call our API, we're gonna be using Axios. So let's just make sure we go back, we just CD into our client folder here. We can npm i Axios. This will just make making requests so much easier than using fetch. And we can import Axios from Axios, just like that. And let's make sure I spell Axios correctly. Now, in order to use Axios, we can just say axios.post, and we can post to a specific URL, which in our case is going to be HTTP localhost. And right now, if we go to our server, we aren't running our application on any port. So we can just say app.listen, and we're just going to specify a port of 3001 for now. That's just hard coded. And now in here, we can say at port 3001, we want to go to the login route, and we want to post some data, and this data is just going to be our code. We're just posting our code to this route, and it's going to call all the code on our server for us. And then we can come in here and we can actually get our response. And the part of the response we care about is our data. So let's just say console.log res.data and see what this returns to us. So now that we have that running down here, let's CD back into our server. And we just want to run our server and we're going to run it with nodemon. So to do that, let's just create a simple task called dev start. And all this is going to do is called nodemon server.js. And now down here, we can say npm run dev start, and that should start up our server with NodeBond. As you can see, it started up down here. And now if we go inside of our dashboard and we make sure we pull in that use auth, we can just say const access token, which is the thing we care about, is coming from use auth, and we're gonna pass in the code. So it should hopefully run this for us. And if we save, we're immediately getting an error. We need to make sure we import use auth. So let's just import use auth from dot slash use auth. 
like that. Now hopefully we don't get any errors when I refresh, as you can see it worked, and if we inspect we should hopefully get our data being returned. If we go to our console, you can see that we're getting an error, it's essentially saying localhost 3000 has been blocked by cores, so we just have a cores issue. This may sound complicated and difficult to solve, but luckily cores is really simple. All we need to do is go to our server, so let's just close out of this, and we just want to install a package called cores. That's all we need to do, and then inside of our server, if we just import this package, we can say const cores equals require cores, and then we can say here app.use and call that cores function. And this is just going to fix all of those cores errors. We rerun our application, and we just inspect our page over here, and we just refresh go over to our console. You're going to notice now we're getting different errors. It's saying request failed with a status code of 500, and inside of our console, we're also getting an error being printed out. Cannot read property code of undefined. So the issue with that is that our body is not able to be parsed. So again, we need to download a separate library called body parser. So we can say npm i body parser. And again, we can require this just like we did with cores. So we can say body parser equals require body parser. And then we just say app.use body parser dot and we care about JSON. So we're going to call the JSON function because we want to use the JSON body parser. Now, if we rerun our application, hopefully this is the last time we'll need to do this. If we just refresh over here, you can see, again, we're getting a request failed of 400, but there's no error on our server. So to see what's going on, let's just get that error object, and we're going to console.log our error to see exactly what's going on. So just refresh down here, and we get the error printed out. If we scroll all the way up, you're going to see it says an authentication error occurred while communicating with Spotify's web API. Invalid grant authorization code expired. Essentially, the code that we're trying to use has expired because you can only use a code once and then it expires very quickly afterwards. So essentially, our code no longer works. We need to get a new code. So one way we can fix this is if we have some kind of error like this, then inside of our use auth here, what we can do is just put a simple catch because this is going to catch any error that we get. And what we want to do if we have an error is just redirect the user. So we can say window.location equals localhost, essentially our root location. So we're just going to redirect the user back to the login page. So now you can see we had an error, so it redirected us back to the you know, login page here. We click login with Spotify. You can see we didn't have an error this time. So if we inspect and go to our console, you can see we have our access token and our refresh token, and it says it's going to expire in 3,600 seconds, which is essentially one hour. One other issue you'll notice though is that we still have the code in our URL and I'd kind of like to just remove that from our URL. So one easy way we can do that is just by saying here, window.history.push state. We just want to push in here. Essentially everything is going to be empty and we just want to push in the root URL. So that's just going to remove all this extra stuff from the end of our URL. So if we try this again, it's again going to redirect us back to this page because our code has expired. And if we log in, you can see that now our URL has been modified so that we don't have that extra code section at the end of our URL, which is exactly what we want. And now what we can do is use these setters here with our data to actually set our data. So we can say set access token is res.data.access token. Copy this down a few more times. We're going to set our refresh token. This is coming from refresh token. And then finally, right here, our expires in. Set expires in is going to come from our expires in. Now we have all the information we need, and at the bottom, we can just return our access token, just like that. So this access token right here is essentially the thing that we need to call all of the different Spotify APIs, the ones that allow us to search for songs, play for songs, and so on, but it only lasts for an hour, and then it expires. And it would suck if your user had to re-log in every single hour if they wanted to use your application. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to set up a little bit of a command that is going to automatically refresh the token for us so that way we don't have to worry about making the user log in. And that's what this refresh token is for. And again, we need our server to be able to do the refresh for us. But on our actual client side, what we can do is set up the code to call our server. So what we can do inside of our use auth hook right here is set up another use effect. And this use effect is essentially going to say whenever our refresh token changes, or whenever our expires in changes, then what we want to do is run this use effect. And that's because right before our token expires, we want to make sure that we refresh it using this refresh token. And to refresh it, we're just going to create a route inside of our server here. We're just going to say post. This is just going to be for refresh. And again, this is going to take a request and a response. And inside of here, what we need to do is get our refresh token 
which is just going to be request.body.refresh token, just like that, because this is what we actually need to do the refresh. And if we go back to this API over here and just scroll down a little ways, you'll see that we have another command called Spotify API refresh access token. And all we need to do is use the refresh token here. And the refresh token is going to be set inside of our credentials up here. So essentially, if we just copy this Spotify here, we can say that we also need to pass it our refresh token, and then we can use the rest of the code down here for actually refreshing our token. Let's just copy this exact code down here. And I'm just going to convert this over to use arrow functions because I find them a little bit cleaner to work with. And I'm going to use the dot catch syntax here. Or if we just catch an error, we're going to do the exact same thing we did down here, where we just send that error to the user. Get rid of all of this. There we go. And then what we can do inside of here for now is we'll just say console.log data. And we'll get rid of this. So this will at least just print out the data that we're getting. And we really will care about the data body because that's going to be the actual information from our response. So if we save that, this is what we're going to really care about. And for now, we're just going to access this information. So if we go back into our use auth, we can actually set up this hook that's going to do that refresh for us. And it's going to look a lot like this here. So I'm just going to copy our authentication Instead, we want to pass to refresh, we want to pass it in our refresh token. So we want to go to the refresh URL and we want to pass it our refresh token. And this is going to return to us some data. And to see what that data is, let's just comment this out for now. Essentially, to see what that data is, we're going to log it out into our server console. So now all we need to do is just log in with Spotify. And you'll see immediately over here, if we look, we get the information being printed out. That is our data. And our data has an expires in, it has an access token and then a token type and a scope. And really all we care about is our access token and our expires in. So we can actually use that information and pass it down to our user. So back into our server, instead of just console logging our data, we can say res.json, and we wanna pass it in the JSON that is our access token, which is our data.body.access token. And we wanna get our expires in, which is just our data.body.expires in, just like that. This is the information we're passing down. And then inside of our use auth, we can get essentially the same information, but we only care about our access token and our expires in. So we've essentially just done the same thing that we did up here, but it's only for a refresh, which is why we're just getting an access token and the expires in. And if we get a failure for some reason, again, we're just gonna redirect the user. So now let's just see if this does anything. If we log in with Spotify, you can see that immediately we're getting redirected back. So something's not quite working right. To see what that error is, let's just go into our server and we're gonna console log any error that we get. And now let's just log in. And you can see we get an error being printed out. So let's see exactly what this says. Scroll all the way up, it just says an authorization error. Invalid request refresh token must be supplied. So let's just make sure request body dot refresh token. And if we go back into use auth, we are passing up the refresh token. So that looks to be correct. Up here, we are setting our refresh token to the res.data.refresh token. But let's just double check in our server that we're properly passing that down in our login. Refresh token is data.body slash refresh token. That appears all to be correct. So again, inside of our use auth, let's just make sure we don't have anything else that is incorrect. What we can do is we could just say console.log refresh token to see what our refresh token is at all points. And now if we just log in with Spotify, inspect our console, Let's just try that one more time here, but we're going to make sure that we don't redirect the user. So just comment out this redirect here. So now log in with Spotify, inspect, go to our console, and you're seeing we get undefined, but then we actually do have a refresh token, but we're still getting that wrong error coming through. The next place to look is obviously going to be in our server. Let's just put this back to how we had it, get rid of this console log, because it looks like everything's correct on our application end. So inside of our server, what we want to do find our slash refresh, which is right up here. We want to make sure our refresh token is actually something. So console.log refresh token, just like that. Now let's see if this actually prints out anything useful. If we just scroll up past the top of the error, you're going to see our refresh token is undefined. So clearly something is wrong with what is happening to our refresh token when it comes up to here. So I think I know what the problem is. If we go back into our use auth, our issue is actually here. For example, whenever our refresh token or expires and changes, this gets ran but it's actually running before we actually have a refresh token or expires in, because it's running before this code finishes. So we just put in a simple check that says if refresh token, if we don't have one of those, or we don't have an expires in time, then I just want to return. I don't want to do anything. This should hopefully resolve the error. If we log in, 
you can see immediately we no longer have that error. If we go to inspect in our console, we don't have any errors at all. And if we look inside of here, again, no errors. So this is working as expected. Now, the only other step is essentially make sure that we only do this refresh right before our thing expires. So we can use a set timeout for that. So we can just say const timeout is equal to set timeout. And inside of our set timeout, we want to essentially do all of this code. So let's put it inside of our set timeout here, just like that. And for our set timeout timer, essentially what we want to do is we want to take our expires in time and we want to essentially refresh this maybe one minute before it expires. So if we just subtract 60 seconds, that'll be one minute. And we multiply by a thousand to convert this seconds to milliseconds. And that'll be our perfect timeout. And then down here, if we do have some kind of error, we just want to make sure we clear our timeout. So we can just return clear timeout and we can pass it in our timeout just like that. So this is just going to make sure that if for some reason our refresh token or expires and changes before an actual refresh, we just make sure we clear the timeout so we don't use an incorrect refresh token. So now, hopefully, we don't actually have any calls to our API. We shouldn't get anything printed out down here. And as you can see, we don't because we're not actually refreshing. Now to check to make sure that this timeout works, let's set our refresh to something like 61 seconds. And since we're subtracting 60 seconds, this will essentially refresh every one second. We're going to set this to 61 here. And right here, we're also going to set it to 61 just to see if this works. And if we save, we should hopefully see a bunch of things being printed out because every second we should do a refresh. So after one second of time, we should have something being printed out, but we don't. Let's just make sure if we inspect, we have no errors here, but it looks like nothing's going up to our server. If we go to our server, it looks like we're not even printing anything in here. So let's just try a console log that says hi to see if we actually are printing up to our server. And we'll just refresh over here real quick. So log in, and hopefully we should see hi getting printed out and we get it printed out once, but we don't get it printed out anymore. The reason this is occurring is because our expires in and our refresh token are technically never refreshing, so the set timeout is only being run once. If we want to make sure we run this every single time our expires in time changes, we can change this to a set interval. Now this is going to run on an interval every single time essentially our expires in is about to change. And if at any point our refresh token or our expires in changes, then it's going to make sure that it actually does the refresh of this timeout for us. So now let's just make sure we change this to a clear interval. We're going to call this timeout variable interval. Let's just copy this up to here. And now if we just click log in here, we should see high being printed out once every second. And as you can see, it's printing out once every second. It's continuing to print out. A little hard to see, but if I make this a little larger, you can see that it's continually printing out once every single second. So let's just bring this back down here. And let's make sure we change this to our res.data.expires in so that this section works. And up here, same thing, res.data.expires in. So essentially that's all of our authorization code taken care of for us. We have refreshing happen automatically in the background for us. We also have here that our token is being created for us immediately. So in our dashboard, we have access to that access token. And the great part is all of that confusing and convoluted code is hidden away in this use auth hook. So we don't even have to think about it when we're working with our dashboard. Now, the next thing that I wanna focus on is essentially the search bar that's gonna show up at the top of our page. So when we're logged in, we'll have a search bar up here. So first I'm gonna wrap everything inside of a container. Let's just do a container here. Let's just make sure we import container. We want to get that from React Bootstrap. And also, while we're at it, we're going to import form because we're going to need a form. And speaking of that form, let's just come in here and get a form.control, the type of search. This is going to be for our search section. We're also going to give it a placeholder value. This is just going to say search song slash artists. And also we're going to give it a value and this value is going to be a variable called search, which we're going to create and it's just going to be some state. So on our on change, what we can do is we can say E, we can set our search based on that E dot target dot value. And that's all it really takes to create that. And up here, we're just getting an error that says we didn't finish off our string. So now if we save, everything looks like it's working. We just don't have those variables created. So let's import use state up here. And we're going to get our search and our set search. And those are going to be equal to use state. And by default, we'll just make it an empty string. So if we save, we can see if we log in that we now have that search bar at the top. So let's add a few little styles to our container to make our styling a little bit better. We're going to, of course, make it a flexbox container and we're going to style everything in the flex column direction. So it's vertical and we'll put some padding on the top and bottom of two. Also, something I'm going to do preemptively is just set our height here to 100 VH for our container. 
And the reason that I'm doing that is because the actual player we want to put at the very bottom of our screen, and we want to put all of the songs that are searched for or the lyrics in the very middle, and those are going to take up all of the rest of the spot. So we can create a simple div here with a class name of flex grow one. And this is essentially going to grow to fill all of the available space. We're also going to put some margin on the top and bottom. And this is where all the songs or lyrics are going to go. And to make sure that this is a scrollable section, we're going to set the style here to be overflow y of auto. That way it'll scroll if it needs to. And this is where essentially our songs are going to go. If we log in here, you can see this is our song section. And at the bottom, whatever we put down here, we just create a div called bottom. It should show up at the very bottom of our page. As you can see, this text bottom is at the very bottom of our page. So now in order to use the Spotify API, we're actually going to use the same library we used on the server. So let's create a new terminal tab here, CD into our client. I'm going to NPM I, that's Spotify Web API node. And even though it's called Spotify Web API node, it's actually usable within the browser. So if, once we have this created, we can actually import this. So we can say import Spotify Web API from Spotify web API node, and we can just say const Spotify API equals new Spotify web API. We again need to pass it in parameters. So in our case, our client ID and our client ID, we can just copy from here, just like that. Now also in order to do all the searching and stuff, we're gonna to need to set up a few use effects. So let's import use effect. And then within here, we'll create a use effect and this first use effect is going to be whenever our access token changes, we need to make sure we set our access token on our Spotify API. So we can say Spotify API.set access token and pass in our access token. And we want to make sure, first of all, that we have an access token. So if we don't have one, we're going to return. So if we don't have one, we'll return. Otherwise, we're going to set it on our Spotify API to use that access token for all of our further queries. That way we don't have to specify it every time we try to make a query. Just go back to our app over here. And now we can actually set up our use effect, which is going to be for searching. So every single time that our search query changes or whenever our access token changes, we want to make sure we rerun this code. And to save our search, we're going to get a state called search results. And we're going to set search results and we're just going to set this to an empty array. So now if we don't have a search, then what we want to do is just return here and we want to set our search results equal to an empty array. Because if we don't have any search, essentially we don't have anything to search for. So we're gonna empty out our search results. Also, if we don't have an access token yet, we wanna just return again, because we don't wanna query anything if we don't have an access token. So let's just make sure we return. And then finally, what we can do is actually do the search query. So I can say Spotify API, and what I wanna do is search tracks. And what this is gonna do is we can pass in our search, which in our case is our search term, and this will search any tracks on Spotify based on artist name, album name, track name, and so on. It uses a bunch of different criteria based on the search term. And this just is a promise, so we can say dot then, and we're gonna get our response. Now, before we do anything, I'm just gonna console.log this response. And if I save this, hopefully when I log in and I start searching for something, we should have some data being printed out as a response. As you see, we have three different responses because I changed my search three different times. And if I open this up, you can see we have a section called body, which we care about. And inside of that body section, we have a tracks section. And inside of here, we have our items section, which contains all of the different items. As you see inside of here, we have even more information. So we have res.body.tracks.items. And this is going to contain the list of all the different tracks that we care about. And as you can see, we have the artist. And really, we're just gonna list out one of the artist names. So we can get the first artist name. We can get the album image, which is inside of here. And also on top of that, we can get the name of the track right here. So we wanna get the name, we wanna get the URI so we can play it, we wanna get the album art, and we wanna get the artist name. So let's just do a simple map over this to get all that information. We can say res.body.tracks.items.map, and we're gonna map through each one of the tracks. Now for each track, we just wanna return down here. We wanna get the artist name, so we're gonna just say artist, name, actually we'll just call it artist, and that is just track.artists, and this is an array, and the very first one we're going to get, and we're going to get their name. So we'll just say the very first artist dot name. Then what we want to do is get the name of the track, we'll call it title, and that's just track.name. We want to get the URI, which is just track.uri. Then of course we want to get the album URL, 
This album URL is going to be a little bit trickier, but if we come into this album section, we have an images array. So we can say track.albumurl.images. And essentially what we want to do is get the smallest one. And we're not going to know exactly which one the smallest one is. So we're going to write a little bit of code to do that for us. We can say const smallest album image. And this is just going to take our track dot album dot images right here and we want to reduce this down to one value so we're going to take our smallest and we're going to take the current image and all we want to do is if image dot height is less than our smallest dot height because if we look here we have a height property on all of our different images then we want to return the current image otherwise what we want to do is we want to return the smallest and then to populate the very first value, we're just going to get the first image as the starting point. So we'll just say here, track album images of zero. So essentially all that this is doing right here, we just expand this out so it's a little easier to read, is we're just saying, okay, what we wanna do is loop through all of our images. And at any point, if the current image is smaller than the smallest, we're gonna set that as our new smallest image. And now we can take our smallest album image and we can get the URI, I think is what it's called. If we just open up our console again, we can be 100% sure go into our console, go into our album, images, and it's actually URL. So let's just make sure we set that as URL. And this information we want to just set for our search results. So set search results equal to the return of this. Now, if we save this, hopefully we should have this search results variable being set. And we can just console.log search results up here to see exactly what's happening. And of course, we're already getting errors. And it just says right here, unexpected token, expected comma, that's just down here. It looks like I'm missing some parentheses in place. I think this is just an extra parenthesis right here. And instead, that parenthesis should be right there. There we go. That cleaned up our code for us. We don't have anything being printed out. So if we log in, you can see we have empty array. And when I start searching, you can see we now have items being populated in there. And as you can see, we have an album URL, an artist, a title, and the URI to actually play the song. And that's all the information that we need about each one of our tracks. And every single time I type something, it prints out a new list. But there's one slight problem with this is that some of these requests may take slightly longer, some may come back quicker. So what we wanna do is every time we change our search or access token, we wanna to cancel this request. There's really no super good way to cancel our request. So instead what we're gonna do is we're just gonna create a simple variable called cancel. We're gonna set it equal to false. We're gonna do this all the way up here before we make our API request. Then inside of here, if cancel is equal to true, I just wanna return. I don't wanna do anything. And finally, when we come down here, all the way at the bottom, we can return, and inside of here, we can just set cancel equal true. What this is going to do is essentially going to say, okay, make the request, and if a new request is made in this time period, we're going to set the cancel for the previous request to true, which inside of here will actually cancel that request for us. And we can actually see this by if we inspect our page, go to our console, we shouldn't have this being printed out a bunch of times. So I can type a bunch of different times, and you can see it still prints out empty, but as soon as I stop typing, then it'll actually do the request for us. Of course, there's no songs with that title, but if I do a little bit less typing and stop, again, note songs, we'll just try a little bit less typing and stop. You can see that there's five songs that have that, but it immediately did those five results and it didn't do any of the other results. And now if I delete a bunch of things, do that again, you can see immediately it did just the printing out once because it only did the query one time where it actually didn't have cancel set to true. And that's just because every time I typed a new character, it came in before this set search results executed, which made sure that the cancel was set to true for the previous one. So it never actually set the results until I finished typing. So now let's just get rid of this console log so we don't pollute things. And what I want to do is actually take those search results and display them down here where it says songs. So to do that, let's just take our search results, map over them. So we have a track for each one of these. And essentially all that I want to do is I just want to return a new component. And this component, we're just going to call it a track result. Actually, we'll call it a track search result. And this track search result, we're going to pass it in our track, obviously. That's all the information we need. It needs to have a key, which we're going to set to our track URI. That's always going to be unique. And then we're just going to close this off for now. This is our track search result, and let's create that component. Track search result.js. Little RFC trick to get that generated. And there we go. Import track search result from track search result. Make sure this is capital right there and make sure this is spelled correctly. There we go. We're getting our track search result imported. So now if we log in here, hopefully everything is going to work. We search, nothing's going to show up here. And that's just because our track search result right now doesn't do anything. So let's make sure we get our track in here. 
And then what I want to do is just style out this div. So the very first thing I'm going to do is just come in here with a simple class name. I want to make this a flex container, set a little bit of margin around it so that it's spaced out from all the other rows. And we're going to align all the items in this to be in the center. Then inside of this div, I want to essentially have an image where the source of that image is going to be equal to our track dot album URL. That's the URL that we got. And I want to make sure here that I specify some styles so that it never gets too big. So our height is going to be 64 pixels and our width is going to be here, 64 pixels. Make sure we put a comma in there and close off our image. Now, if we just search, you can see immediately we have our images being rendered, which is perfect. Next thing I want to do is actually render out the title of our song. So we can put this inside of another div and we just want to make sure we space it out a little bit. So we'll say class name, margin on the left is three. That's just going to space it out from our album. And then we can get a div that has our actual track title, the so track dot title. Now, if I save, you can see it prints out the name of the track. And I also want to print out the name of the artist. And this is just going to change the text color to be muted. That way it's a little bit lighter gray. And this is the track dot artist. Now, if I save, you can see we have the artist down here and we have the track name up here. Now, the final thing that I want to be able to do is whenever I click on one of these tracks, I want to play it. So first of all, inside of some styles here, I want to change my cursor to be pointer. And this just, whenever I hover over one of these rows, gives me the icon that says that I can actually click on it. And also, I want to set up an on click that is going to do something like handle play, because we want to play that song. And inside that function handle play, what we need to do is just do a little bit of code that chooses our track for us. So we're going to take in something here called choose track. And then here, we're just going to call choose track with our track. That's all that we're going to do. And this choose track function is a function we're going to create in a little bit. But now whenever we click on one of these, it'll call this choose track function for us. So we need to create that choose track and figure out how we can actually play our Spotify songs. So in order to play a song, we're actually going to use a library here. So let's just make sure that we're in the correct folder. We can just say ls. This is the correct folder. So we can just say npm i. This is called React Spotify Web Playback. This is a library that's going to do a bunch of the work for us. It has a component itself built in that allows us to do really easy playing of songs directly from Spotify. So once this finishes installing, I'm going to create a new component called player.js, which is going to house our player. Just do a quick RFC here. And then what we want to make sure we do is in our dashboard, we want to render out that player all the way down here at the bottom. Let's just come in here. We can say player and we'll just close that off. Right now we don't have anything passed to it, but that's okay. Also, let's make sure we import that up here. So we want to get player and we want to get it here from player. So now if we go into that player component, we can render out that Spotify player. And this is just a simple component that we can import. So we're going to import Spotify player, and it comes from that React Spotify player web playback, just like that. And this Spotify player takes a few different things. First of all, we need to pass it in our access token, which is just called token. So we need to get an access token that we pass in here, just like that. So if we go back to our dashboard, scroll all the way down, we can make sure we pass in our access token, just like that. Then back into our player, we need to specify a show save icon. This is just going to allow us to save songs to our Spotify library. And then we specify the URIs of the songs that we want to play. So we want to pass in the track URI for the track that we want to play. And inside of here, we're just going to check if we have a song to play, then we're going to pass it into an array called track URI here. Otherwise, we're going to pass it in an empty array because we don't have any songs to play because this always expects an array to be passed into it. Now, lastly, what I want to do is I just want to make sure that if we don't have an access token, that I return null up here because we don't actually want to render a player if we don't have an access token to use with it. Now, if I save and I log in, we should have a player show up at the bottom. As you can see, it just loaded in, and this is the player that we have. Now, we just need to make sure we pass in our track URI. So if I go into our dashboard here, this is pretty simple. Our track URI is just going to be equal to whatever song we currently select. But right now, we don't have any songs being selected, so we need to store that in some type of state. So let's just create a new state. We're going to call this one plain track and set plain track. And for now, this is just going to be nothing. So let's clear it out and make sure here I spell set correctly. 
And then we just want to create a simple function called choose track. And this choose track function is going to take a track. It's going to set our plane track. Oops, set plane track to our track. We also want to make sure we clear out our search term because we don't want our search to be there at all. So we're just going to clear out our search once we choose a track, just like that. And now this choose track is something we can pass in to our track search results, just like this. And if you remember, inside that track search result, we're using that choose track here and passing it the track we want to play. So then down here, we can take our plain track and we can get the URI if it exists. So if we have a plain track, it's going to get the URI for us. So now what we can do is just wait here, log in, type something in, for example, stream beats, and we can click on this and it's going to play it. But you'll notice it doesn't actually play it. And that's because we first need to click the play button down here and then it's going to start playing. That's a little bit clunky in my opinion. So we can actually work around this because this player has a play built into it. And you could think, oh, we'll just set this to true and it'll work. But we actually need to make sure we set this to true after we change our song. Otherwise it won't actually work. So we need to make sure it sets to true after we select a song. To do this is actually super simple. We can just create a really simple state for play and set play, set it equal to use state. And by default, it's gonna be set to false. And then we can use a simple use effect and all this use effect is going to do is set play to be equal to true every time that we change our track URI. Then in order to unset our play to true, essentially set it to false when we're done playing, all we need to do is use a callback property here. This callback takes a function, and this function has some state, and the state will tell us if we're playing or not. So if we're not playing, then what we want to do is just set our play to false. And essentially this state is plain. This is going to occur every time the state changes. So every time our song changes, every time our song finishes, starts and so on, this callback is gonna be called. So every time that we're not playing, it's gonna set our play to false for us. And then here we just pass in our play. So now we just make sure we import use state and use effect. We come over here, type in a song like stream beats, play it, it should hopefully play immediately. And of course it didn't. Let's just test that one more time to make sure it wasn't a fluke. We'll say play here, and it didn't play. Let's just try refreshing it, log in, search for this again, and this time it worked. So it looks like we just need to refresh our page. So now the last step is just to display the lyrics of the song right here in the middle section. So if we go back to our dashboard, what we can do is we can say, okay, here's going to be our search results. And if we don't have any search results, then we want to display our lyrics. So if our search results that length is equal to zero, then what we want to do is inside of here, display a new div, which is just gonna have some centered text. So we'll say text center. And we also wanna make sure we style it in a certain way here so that the white space doesn't actually wrap. So we can say here, free, and by this I actually mean that it allows the white space to wrap, so it allows new lines and so on to be displayed. And then in here, we're just gonna display our lyrics, which right now, we don't actually have a variable for, but we're going to create some state for this. So this is going to display our lyrics state. And if we just scroll up here, we can set state for our lyrics and a set lyrics. We can just set this to an empty string. And then whenever we change songs, I want to set our lyrics to be an empty string. Now, all we need to do is a way to get the lyrics and we're going to use our API that we've created for that. So let's just minimize some of these hooks here and create another hook and this hook here is going to be for our API to access the lyrics. And this is going to happen anytime the song that we're playing changes. So anytime our playing track changes, we're going to call this use effect. And first, we're going to make sure that we have a playing track. So if we don't have a playing track, we're just going to return. Otherwise, we're going to use Axios. We're going to make a git request here. And we want to make it to our localhost 3000. And this is actually localhost 3001. And we're just going to create an API called lyrics. And then we can pass in here some params. Since we're doing a Git request, we need to specify params. We want to specify the track, which is our plain track dot title. And we want to specify the artist. And this is our plain track dot artist, just like that. And then we can just put our dot then on here with our response. And we can set our lyrics to the response, which is res dot data dot lyrics. And now all we need to do is essentially specify the API for this route here. So if we just save this and we go back into our server here, we need to download a new library to do our lyrics. So let's just CD into our server here. 
and npm i a library called lyrics finder. This is a super simple library. It takes a track name and an artist and is going to get your lyrics for you. So we can say here const lyrics finder equals require lyrics finder. And then we can just create a new app route app.get slash lyrics. And we want to get request response. And we're just going to make this a simple async function here. So it's really easy to work with. And we're going to set our lyrics equal to all we need to do is await our lyrics finder, pass it in our request.query.artist and our request query dot track. And this is going to get our lyrics for us. And if it doesn't have any lyrics, we're just going to print out the string, no lyrics found. Just like that. And we can say res.json of our lyrics. And that's it. That's all it's going to take to get our lyrics. It's a really super simple, straightforward code. But to make sure we can access the query portion of our query params here, we need to make sure we have a body parser set up for that. So we need to use the URL encoded body parser and pass extended to true, just like that. And this is going to allow us to actually parse the URL parameters since this is a git request right here. Now, if we just make sure we import Axios inside of our dashboard all the way up here, we want to get it from Axios. Get rid of that extra quotation. And you can see we can log in with Spotify. We can search, for example, stream beats, play the song, and you can see the lyrics are automatically populated. If we search for a different song that doesn't have lyrics, for example, one of the stream beats really new songs, for example, these don't have lyrics yet, you can see right there that is printing out no lyrics. Before we wrap up this video, I also want to show you how to store these variables in an ENV file. So we can just create a new .env file here inside of our server. And we essentially need to store these variables. So I'm just going to copy them over. We need to store our redirect URI. We need to store our client ID and our client secret. We can just use equals here, get rid of all the spacing and extra punctuation. Same thing here. Get these tabbed in the right place. And that stores them inside of this env file. And then what we can do is we can just cd into that server folder. We can npmi.env, which is just a simple library we can use to access this env folder. And inside of here, at the very top, before everything else, we can say const require, or I'm not even not mean const, we can just say require dot env dot config. That is going to load in our env variables. Then here we can just say process dot env dot and then all those variables we created, such as redirect URI. We did the exact same thing right here with our client ID. And then we want to get our client secret as well. Client secret. Just like that. And let's just copy these down here. Paste those in place. Get rid of this console log. And that works just as well. And that's all it takes to create this Spotify inspired clone. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out my other clone related videos linked over here and subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.